Hello, today we're talking about families of quadratic functions, which is lesson 7 from unit 3. A family essentially for the time being just means uh, a group of related parabolas. So, you know, for instance, they all have the same vertex, or they all have the same axis of symmetry, or they all have the same x-intercepts. Um, essentially what today is about is about, you know, given certain information, can you create the specific parabola that has such and such a quality. So uh, let, let's just, you know, let, let me sh show you what a family of quadratics looks like first. So let's say we draw a f uh, quadratic um, x minus 2 and x plus 1. Okay, so there's a quadratic. It has two x-intercepts. One of them is at 2 and one of them is at negative 1. And now a family of quadratics for example, would be all the quadratics that share the same x-intercepts as this one I've drawn. So, you know, we could easily draw another one. We could say negative 2, x minus 2, x plus 1. And there's another member of the family uh, there where you have, uh, you know, the same x-intercepts, but obviously a bunch of different characteristics uh, otherwise. Let's just show, just to show how some families, you know, how, how families could work... Uh, if we draw this, so we draw a sequence, uh, k times f, with k will be the numbers from 0 to n. Actually, sorry, not the numbers 0 to n, it's 1 to n. Then you can see a f families. Oh, sorry, n. Family of functions is like all of these different parabolas, right? that all have the same x-intercepts but all the different possible slopes right and we could also make let's say negative n to n you could see that all the different families of parabolas are like if you imagine every different possible slope or excuse me every different a value would create one of these parabolas right because they have the same two x-intercepts but they have a variety of different a values, right? So I just drew all the ones all the way from negative 50 to positive 50. And so some of them are very stretched, right? And some of them are, you know, only a little bit more stretched than usual. But all of these families share one thing in common, which is their x intercepts. So it says, what characteristics will two parabolas in this family share? So uh, this is very similar to my question. Let's just change it to x minus 4. Uh, and x plus 5. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at all the different parabolas, let's get rid of this one, that, that have an x-intercept at, you know, po negative 5 and positive 4, right? And so these are what all those parabolas would look like. Let's shrink it down to, a, a, you know, a more si a easily deal with number. Right, and so you can see a bunch of these parabolas here, um, uh, you know, that pass through those two x-intercepts that have a variety of different stretches. So let's make a couple of points about what they all have in common. They all share an x-intercept at 4, 0. They all share an x-intercept at negative 5, 0. There's one other thing they all share as well, which is that... Let's drop it down to 1 again. So we're just looking at the 1. Uh, they all share the same axis of symmetry, right? So the axis of symmetry, remember, is 4 plus negative 5. The two x-intercepts, you add them together and then divide by 2. So x equals negative 0 0.5. That axis of symmetry is going to be the same for all of them, right? All of them, their vertex is going to pass through that line every single one of those parabolas does that. So they all share an axis of symmetry at x equals negative 0.5 and therefore the vertex of each parabola 
is located at negative 0.5 comma y. Now, of course, they don't all share the same vertex in the sense that they have different y values, so I can't say what y value they have, but all of their various vertices would have the same x value, right? They would all have this x value at, uh, at negative 0.5, right? You can see they're all symmetrical along that line. Okay, another question. How would the parabolas negative 4 x minus 3 squared minus 5 and negative 8 x minus 3 squared minus 5, are they the same? How are they the same? How are they different? Okay, so let's make a little table. So similarity, difference. Okay, so let's draw these two. Um, keep this, keep this, keep this. Okay, so we have uh, negative 4 x minus 3 squared Okay, so we have negative 4f, oops, and negative 8f. Okay, so those are the two parabolas that we're supposed to be looking at right now. Now these two uh, do not, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. You can't, uh, you can't do it the way I just did it. Sorry. I was going to say they have things in common that they shouldn't have. Okay, so let me go back and change it. Okay. Okay, so we have two parabolas here. How, what, in what way are they the same and what way are they different? So one of them opens, you know, they both open down, so let's start with that. Okay, they both have a vertex at 3, negative 5. Uh, they are both vertically stretched compared they're both vertically stretched compared to their uh, uh, parent function right the one that, that didn't have an a value at all uh, in terms of how they're different I mean they're not congruent so they're not congruent shapes um, if they had any x-intercepts, they probably wouldn't have the same x-intercept, right? Let's draw the family of functions here. So let's say uh, sequence uh, k times x minus 3 squared minus 5, um, where k is any number between negative n and n. Okay, so again, if you draw the families here, all those families share the same vertex. They do not share the same x-intercept, right? Stretch this out a little bit. Okay, so again, all of those families, what do they have in common? The same x, the same vertex, uh, and the difference is they do not share x-intercepts, if they have any which these ones, the one, the two in the question don't, but it, you know, if we expand the family to be all the members of the family that have that vertex, of course some of them do have x-intercepts and none of them have the same x-intercepts as one another. Okay, now a very common question here is to use your knowledge of families to narrow down a specific parabola from the list of families. So let, let me just show you v visually what it is we're trying to accomplish here. So again, let's make a, a slider for the families. We'll say it's from negative 10 to 10, and uh, we'll. So we're going to draw this. So we know its x-intercepts are located at negative 3 and 4. So we have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0. We have an x-intercept at 4, 0. Okay. We also know that the parabola passes through 1 and negative 12. So 1 and negative 12 is down there. Now. If you draw the families that pass through A and B, so for example, let's say we drew all the families that pass through A and B. So sequence uh, k times, okay, x plus 3 and x minus 4, right, would be the equation that we need to go through those points A and B. And we want this to be anywhere from, uh, let's say, negative n to n, and it will count by 0.1s. Okay, so like, if you think about this, okay, the family, the 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 
parabolas we need, eventually, right, we're going to find a parabola that goes through C. So you see what, what we've kind of done here? We eventually, we found a parabola that went, that went through uh, C. And you will be able to do that for every question, right? No matter where the point is, you'll be able to eventually create uh, a member of a family that passes through that point. So let's demonstrate how that's done. So the family in this case is x plus 3. So it's, I'm going to put an a in the front because I don't know the stretch. But I know that the family would have to look like that. And furthermore, you know, sometimes in these questions you're going to see uh, added to this, you're going to see... Uh, where a, you know, uh, is some real number. So a is, is some real number. So there's the family. We know that this parabola must be a member of that family in order to have those x-intercepts. Now the member of the family passes through 1, negative 12. Okay, therefore, f of 1 equals negative 12. So I go back to my equation, and I replace f of x with negative 12, and then I go a x, uh, sorry, 1 plus 3 and 1 minus 4, right? And, and what's going on there is I'm subbing in the point, right? So basically sub in 1, negative 12, and that's what I've done here. Now when you do this, you get negative 12 is equal to a times 4 times negative 3. Negative 12 equals a times negative 12, and therefore a is equal to 1. So the equation of the parabola we need is f of x is equal to x plus 3 and x minus 4. And if I draw that equation, let's just go back here for a second, x plus 3 and x minus 4. If I draw that equation, that one fits perfectly, right? It goes through the intercepts I want and it goes through the specific point that I want. And we were able to do that by using what we know about the family and then trying to isolate a, which is the stretch value. Okay, Let's try uh, another one here. Um, I, I'm going to come back to this one on B, but let's come back to it. Uh, oh, actually, never mind. We'll just go with it with, with here. Okay, so here's a really good question. I, I always ask this question. So I ask this question under application or communication. Okay, so it says find the member of the family that has these different roots and it passes through 4, 8. Okay, so let's draw it again and we'll see if this helps. So it passes through this point. Okay, so 2 minus root 3 is, so we're going to go 2 minus square root 3 and then 2 plus square root 3. And those are going to be the two brackets that I have, right? x minus a and x minus b. And then we're going to have a0 and b0. Okay, so let's get rid of a few extra points here. Okay, so I need a parabola that goes through these two points. Now again, these two points are not nice numbers, right? They're, it's rounded them, but you, know, you could imagine if I don't round them, if I leave them exact, these are irrational numbers. They're square roots, so you know, this, approaching this question is going to be a little bit different. Now we want the, we want the equation to pass through 4, 8. So where's 4, 8? Right? It's all the way up there. So when I want to draw the family here, so again, let's draw the family. So sequence k times f, where k is a number between, let's say, negative 10 and 10, counting up by 0.1s, or 0.5s maybe, 2.5s. Counting up by 1s is fine. OK, so then we are looking for you know, the specific member of the family that goes through this point A. Now you can see I found it. It's one of these like ones that I drew. So there is a quadratic that passes through these two roots, the two roots that we wanted, right? That also goes through this point A. How do we find it? Now here's something really important about how this question works. Okay? X intercept the first x intercept is 2 minus square root 3. Okay? Uh Square root 3. Okay, and uh, and then of course the y value is 0. 
So this means, right, that f of 2 minus square root 3 is equal to 0 in our question. Okay, this means, okay, and this is the really important thing, that our family, the family of equations here, is going to be x minus 2 minus square root 3. Okay, that, that's going to be the first sort of bracket, right? Because how, how did it work in the question above? Like, look at the question above. One of the x-intercepts was positive 4. So I made a bracket that said x minus 4. Now I'm looking at this question. One of the intercepts is 2 minus root 3. So I'm going to make a bracket that is x minus bracket 2 minus root 3. Okay, now the other uh, bracket here, the other member of the family, so let's say f of x equals, the other member of the family would be x minus and then the other root, right? So what was the other root? The other root is 2 plus root 3, okay? So the, one of the x-intercepts is 2 minus root 3, and so I put that in a bracket after a subtraction sign. Oh, I see. Well, let me do that. Okay, the other x-intercept was 2 plus root 3, and uh, I put it also in a bracket after a subtraction sign, right? It was the other, uh, the other root, right? So that one goes there, and that one goes there. Okay, so it's the same thing that we were doing before. It's just that the number that is the root is a little bit more complicated. It's not just one single value, but it's two values. Now, what's interesting about this is when you FOIL this, what happens? Okay, so let's FOIL it. Now, the A I'm just going to leave alone. Okay, now let's track through everything I'm going to need to do here. I need to do an x times x. Actually, sorry, before I do this, let's, let's distribute the negative sign so that this is a little easier to read. So, I'm looking here at this negative sign, and I want to distribute it into the 2 and into the negative 3. So what happens? I get x minus 2 plus root 3, right, because the two negatives cancel. In the other bracket, I get x minus 2 minus root 3. Okay, do you see how that was that was foiled? Make sure you understand that. Pause it if you need it and do it yourself, right, to make sure you get how that, that negative distributes. Now we can foil it, sorry. So let's foil it. Leave the A alone, and then what we're going to do is do the x times every term, then do the 2 times every term, and then do the root 3 times every term. So watch what happens. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And then negative root 3 times x is negative root 3x. So there I did the x, the first term, right? We'll just put it in green, and, I'll, and what it distributed to. It distributed to those three. Okay, now I'm going to look at the second term, which is a negative 2. We'll color this one in orange and we'll distribute the negative 2. So change my color to orange. So negative 2 times x is another negative 2x. Okay, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times negative root 3 is positive 2 root 3. Okay, so there are, I distributed everything to do with the 2. Now I need to distribute a positive root 3. Okay, so positive root 3 times x is going to be plus uh, root 3x. Okay, so plus root 3x, right? Let's just copy it when it's in blue here. Okay, then I take root 3 times negative 2, so I have minus 2 root 3. And then I have positive root 3 times negative root 3. So think to yourself, what does that make? What does positive root 3 times negative root 3 make? Well, it should be negative and then we have a root 3 twice. Well, a root 3 twice is just a 3, right? Root 3 times root 3, let's just copy this and paste it again. This becomes just 3. The root disappears. Now, what's interesting about this, okay, is let's look for some like terms that we see. So let's let's collect some like terms. Uh, let's put it back into a just regular color here. So, 
we have an x squared term. Now we have a negative 2x and another negative 2x. So that becomes negative 4x. Okay. Then we have a minus root 3x with a plus root 3x. Okay, minus root 3x and a plus root 3x. So minus, oops, just copy my root 3 again. Okay, now, and then, oh, let's keep going. So then, okay, so we have a 2x, we covered this, we covered, then we have a plus 4. I haven't done the 4 yet. Then we have a plus 2 root 3. I already did this root 3x. Then we have a minus 2 root 3. And then we just have the minus 3 at the end. So look, a minus root 3x and a plus root 3x cancel. A 2 root 3 and a minus 2 root 3 cancel. And something kind of amazing happens here where when we're done, we actually have no roots left in the question. Right? We have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 3, which is x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now, again, this is the kind of question where you got to practice this a couple of times, and I guarantee I will ask this question uh, of you. Uh, and sorry, I just realized we kind of forgot something here. I forgot that I, all of this was times a, right? We're only we're, we're still working on the family in this question. We haven't actually got to the uh, actual answer yet. Okay, so we're looking at a a quadratic that is of that family. And we know that it has to pass through the point 4, 8. So it passes through 4, 8. And since it passes through 4, 8, we know that f of 4 is equal to 8. So now we can go and we can replace everything we know. So I replace f of x with 8. And then I say x squared is 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1. Okay? No, oh, sorry. Plus 1. Okay, so we get 8 equals a. 16 minus 16 plus 1, 8 equals a, and there's our answer. Our answer should be an 8. So the solution is the quadratic that we're looking for, f of x, is 8 bracket x squared x squared minus 4x uh, plus 1. Okay, or you could expand it if you like, and we could say. Uh, 8x squared minus 32x plus 8. Let's draw that. So 8x squared minus 32x plus 8. Okay, and let's hide the families and look at what we found. We found the quadratic that goes through those two weird roots we were asked to do, but that also passes through this nice point over here of 4, 8. Okay. Now, a question I'm going to post to the uh, website. I'm going to post this on the front page. So someone go ahead and answer it for everybody, a thinking question. What would happen if I used the quadratic formula on my answer? Okay, I'm not going to answer that for you, but I want you to think about it. And if you know the answer, post it to the website, because I'm going to I'll leave you a space where you can post it, discuss it with each other. So. We just worked all the way from this question. We knew it's x-intercepts and what it passes through, and we were able to create the specific equation that does exactly that. It goes through those two x-intercepts, and it goes through that other point. Again, really good question to check. Guaranteed, I will ask this question, so make sure you go over it. OK, an easier one now, it just says, determine the equation of parabola with this vertex that passes through such and such. So again, we know the family here is a x plus 3 squared plus 6. Remember, if it has a vertex at negative 3, 6, then it's going to be x plus 3 squared and then plus 6. Now we also know, according to the, the second part of the question, that f of 2 is equal to negative 9. Therefore, negative 9 is equal to a x plus 3 squared plus 6. And I can actually replace that uh, x, excuse me, with the number negative 3, plus 3 squared plus 6. Uh, sorry, not negative 3. Jeez, I was going to say that isn't going to work. I uh, replace the number with 2. So I remember, I'm, I'm replacing the y with negative 9 and the x with 2. So what I get here is negative 9 is equal to a, 5 squared plus 6. 
bring the 6 over, I get negative 15 equals a times 25, and therefore negative 15 over 25 is equal to a. We can reduce that a little bit to negative 3 over 5 is equal to a. So let's check this. Okay, I'm going to draw, I'll draw the two points, and then we'll see if our parabola does the trick. So the parabola we're saying is f of x is equal to negative 3 over 5, x plus 3 squared plus 6. Okay, let's attempt to see if that works now. So I need it to go through uh, 2 and negative 9. And then I need it to have a vertex at negative 3, 6. Okay, now the parabola that we suggested does this is this one. Negative 3 over 5 x plus 3 squared plus 6. Okay, now it has a vertex exactly where we want, right, at point B, and it passes through point A exactly where we want. So again, same process as what we did before. Write down what you know about the family, write down the point, sub in the point into the family, and figure out the stretch. So it's always going to be the same question. Okay, determine the equation of a parabola with x-intercepts at plus and minus 5, and passing through 2, 6. Again, simple question. We know that f of 2 is equal to negative 6. That's the point. We know that the family is a x minus 5 and x plus 5 because one of the x-intercepts is at positive 5. One of the x-intercepts is at negative 5, so I know that's the family. I sub in the values. Negative 6 is equal to a 2 minus 5, 2 plus 5. Negative 6 is equal to a uh, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 2 plus 5 is 7 and therefore negative 6 equals negative 21a and negative 6 over 20, uh, sorry, positive 6 over 21 equals a, right? That would be the equation that we're looking for. So let's see if this works. Uh, 2 negative 6 is the vertex I need. Uh, and then I need an x-intercept at x minus 5, uh, not the vertex, sorry, just a, just a point. Sorry, uh, vertex at 5, 0. That's an x-intercept, sorry, not a vertex. So I have, I have get rid of this point because we don't need it. So we have a point at 2, negative 6. We have an x-intercept at 5 and negative 5. Now the, pr the, quest the equation that we think should work here is f of x equals 6 over 21, x minus 5, x plus 5, right? That's the equation that we think is going to work. Let's try it. So let's take f of x, replace it, 6 over 21, x minus 5, x plus 5, and there you go, right? It has the right x-intercept at negative 5, it has an x-intercept at positive 5, and it goes through 2, negative 6, which is what we were hoping for. Okay, so there's the answer to that question. Now the last one today is a really good question. It's a thinking question. Um, so it's thinking, and it, you know, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good one to try and, and understand. Good one that I will probably ask. A tunnel with a parabolic arch is 14 meters wide. Okay, so let's go back to my picture here. And let's say we want the tunnel to be 14 meters wide. So let's say we have a vertex uh, or an x-intercept at negative 7, 0 and positive 7, 0. Okay, so here this is going to be my arch. And you can see that it's 14 meters wide because if I draw a segment from A to B, it's a length of 14, right? Now, the arch that I'm drawing, so let's draw a parabola. Uh, um, let's use a slider for this one. And we'll say uh, a x minus 7, x plus 7. OK, so the arch that I'm going to need, you can see, is going to have a negative a value. And it's going to somehow. You know, let's say we need a, let's say it's probably not bigger than negative 5 uh, to 0. Okay, so there's my arch. And you can see, like, probably, you know, not quite sure exactly how tall it should be, but you can kind of see how a parabolic arch that's 14 meters wide could work. Now if we want to make this a little bit better, what we could say is function g between negative 7 and 7 only. So it's not drawing the negative parts, it's only drawing the positive part of the tunnel. right? Which is, so it's a tunnel, it's in a parabolic arch, and we know that it is, sh it is shaped in such a way that it is 14 meters wide. Uh, we can get rid of the negative y-axis here. Okay, So this is what we're looking at. What else do we know? 
it says the height of the arch 6 meters from the left edge is 2 meters. Okay, so 6 meters from the left edge would be where, right? 6 meters from the left edge would be the point negative 1, 0, right? That, think about where that point is, right? If I draw, so let's draw um, a segment, oops, negative 7, negative 1 to uh, negative 1, negative 1, right? So like if you draw a line that's 6 meters in from the edge, from the left edge, you're going to find, you know, the point is right here where C is. Now, I don't, Okay, so anyway, so uh, yeah, all right, sorry, sorry. So this point, sorry, so we had this point, negative 1, 6, right? That that would be a point that's 6 meters in from the edge. I see, yeah, and it has a height of, the height of the arch is 2 meters. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drawing this wrong. The height of this arch is, is, is 2 meters at this point, not 6. So let's stretch this a little bit so we're not, okay? So there's our point, 6 meters from the left edge. A obviously is a number much, much smaller than what I th originally thought. And you could see, like, if I could find the specific member of the family that goes through that point, right? And this, so think about where this point is again. It's six meters in from the left edge, so this is a length of six, right? Let's just make sure we can show the, the value. And it's two meters tall at that point. So you have a you have this parabola, right? We know a lot about this parabola. We know what family it belongs to, right? And we know where this point is. We could figure out the specific equation. And the question is, can a truck that is four meters tall and four and a half meters wide pass through the tunnel? Now, it should be obvious that a truck four meters tall is completely out of the question in terms of passing through the tunnel. So I'm guessing that four meters tall thing is a mistake. Let's say the truck is two meters tall. Okay, so let's make that quick adjustment there. Just so obviously four meters tall is not going to fit. Let's say it's two meters tall. And uh, four and a half meters wide. Uh, let's make it a little harder. Let's say it's 1.9 meters tall. Okay, so the truck is 1.9 meters tall and 4.5 meters wide. How do you draw that truck? The truck, right, you got to think about the truck as, as like coming at us, right? So like the truck is facing us and it would, where would the truck be located? Well, the truck would be a rectangle, right? And it's four and a half meters wide. So here I'm going to show you where the four corners of the truck would be. So let's call the truck bottom right would be located at 2.250. That would be where the bottom right hand of the truck would be. Okay. The bottom left of the truck would be located at negative 2.250. So there would be the truck's bottom left. So let's get rid of C and D here for a sec just to make this a bit easier. Okay, so the truck's bottom right is down here the bottom left is over here. The top right of the truck right, would be located where? Well, half, it'd be 2.25 again, 2.25 in terms of its uh, uh, right and left width, and then we said it was 1.9 meters tall, right? The truck's top left would be located at negative 2.25 and 1.9. So here's the truck, right? So the truck would be polygon. Actually, no, it's be easier to just click this. So here's the truck from here to here to here to here. Okay, so here's our truck. Again, you know, try try not the corners of the truck being the corners of of the of this uh, this picture. Now again, you can clearly see right that that truck is not going to fit the corner here remember the corner is the truck it doesn't 
it's outside the boundary of, of what you know what's going to fit on this picture okay so there's there's the question just going through it logically visually what we what we did and what we expect to find okay what we expect here is that this truck is not going to fit now let's go through this and demonstrate um, you know using uh, using what we know so the parabolic arch to create the arch is uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to say the family that the arch belongs to is, is a x minus 7 x plus 7 this will make sure that I have two x intercepts at that are 14 units apart now you can choose any units that are 14 units apart you could choose 0 and 14 if you want I just find it a little easier in this question to, to sort of center it we also know that f of negative 1 is equal to 2 and that's what I'm where I'm getting that information so let's just color code the information here so this one is green I've used the green piece of information this one I just uh, I'm just gonna highlight that because I changed the question right now here's where I'm using the blue information let's say the height of the tr the height of the arch from here and here okay so let's create the equation of the arch so the equation of the arch. We know that 2 is equal to a bracket negative 1 minus 7 negative 1 plus 7. Okay, that would that would tell us uh, you know what the value of a is. So sorry, let's get rid of this. Okay, so 2 is equal to a. Uh, we have uh, negative 8 times uh, 6. Okay, so we get, sorry, why this is, uh, two equals, okay, so negative 48a, therefore a is equal to uh, negative two over 48, right? That would be what, what you're looking at in that question. Okay, if I can go back to my model, if I set a to be negative 2 over 48, right, now I actually get this to perfectly go through the point d that I, I really couldn't get it to go through when I was just using the slider. But now I know the exact point that it goes through. Okay, now what I know about this truck, okay, can a truck that is 1.9 meters tall and 4.5 meters wide. So first of all, the truck has the best chance of going through if it's centered, right? If it, like if the truck's going in on either side of the tunnel, obviously that's going to be worse because the parabolic shape is has the most room in the middle. So we want to center the truck in the middle of the of the graph, okay? Therefore, the truck the truck's right side, right? Uh, to, the truck's top right corner would be located at okay half the distance half the width of the truck to the right of zero so 4.5 is the width of the truck we're going to divide it by 2 we get 2.25 and the height of the truck so the x coordinate the y coordinate would be the height of the truck which is 1.9 meters so how do i check if this truck is going to fit or not what I want to do to check the to check if it to, to check if it fits, okay. Uh, what I want to do is check f of 2.25 and ask the question: Is it bigger than or less than, uh, or is it less than or greater than 1.9, right? If it's if f of 2.25 of my equation, right? So let's just go back and remember what my equation was. It was f of x equals negative 2 over 48, x minus 7, x plus 7. And what I need to do is sub in 2.25 into that equation, and then see what the height of the tunnel is at that point. If the height of the tunnel is bigger than 1.9, then my truck is going to fit. Otherwise, it isn't. So f of 2.25 is equal to negative 2 over 48, uh, 2.25 minus 7 and 2.25 plus 7 ok 
Okay, so we get f of 2.25 is equal to negative 2 over 48. Okay, so this would be negative uh, 4.75, and this would be 9.25, right? And so we're going to get, the, we'll, we'll calculate that. I guess I could just change it into a fraction. Uh, okay, so that's negative 19 over 4, and that's 37 over 4. I don't think that really helps me. I'm just going to use the, the computer to calculate this one. So 9.25 times negative 4.75 times negative 2 divided by 48. I get that the height of the tunnel is 1.83. Okay, The height of the tunnel being 1.83 is too small for my truck to fit. Therefore, the truck will not fit in this tunnel. The truck would have fit if it was 1.82, or you know, 1.83 meters tall. Well, let's say 1.82 because we're not sure about the rounding, right? So, the tunnel. Um, this is a really good question. Okay, again, go over and and do it again. Show me that you know, like there's a lot of thinking involved here. Essentially what we did, right, let's just hide our truck for a sec. We came up with a model that had the right x-intercepts and the right height. That was the point D, right? And then what we did, let's show object. Okay, we came up with a model that had a width of 14 and it had the right height. Then what we did is we tried to figure out where the truck was. Right? And the truck, we, we know, had a width of 4.5, so it, it would be 2.25 to the left and 2.25 to the right, and it had a height of 1.9. So what we wanted to do was check to see if the corner of the truck would fit, because if the corner fit, then obviously the rest of it would fit. So we checked the corner, the corner didn't fit, therefore the truck didn't fit. Okay, really good question to try and go over and see. Uh, I'm going to post the other problem to the main website. You can have a look at that. Make sure you read over the consolidation here and try any of the questions that gave you trouble. Uh, you can post any questions you have to the discussion forum.